In this algorithm tutorial, we are going to see how we can utilize the stack data structure and see how we can reverse a string in Python. So this is kind of a practical way to see how a stack can be used. Because remember, a stack is a abstract data structure, which means it's not something real. It's more of a theoretical concept that can be implemented in various programming languages. And so the example that we're going to be using in this guide is to take a string and then using the stack data structure, we're going to be able to reverse the characters in the string. So in other words, since my name is Jordan, after we build out this program, we should be able to run our new reverse string program and have it say N, A, D, R, O, and J, and that should be the output. And as you can kind of see, this is a great illustration for how we can use the stack data structure because a stack utilizes the concept of taking one element stacking another item on top of it and another on top of it and continuing on and then as soon as you want to remove items you have to remove them and the latest item that was on the top is the one that has to be removed. We can't go and slide one right out from the middle or grab one from the bottom. We have to p pull out whatever the last one in that we added. So let's walk through how we can do that. And you're also going to learn a little bit more about Python along the way. So we have this stack class that we created and we're actually going to be able to reuse this stack class inside of our new program and I'm going to show you how you're able to create a class and then import it into a new file in Python. So I'm going to create a new file here and we'll just have a reverse string with stack file and then we're going to be able to import the stack class. And the way you can do that in Python is say from stack import stack, just like this. And the only way this will work is with this exact syntax is if this stack class here is in the same exact directory as wherever you're trying to import it. So that's very important. So next from here, we're going to create a function. So I'm going to say def reverse underscore string, and it's going to take in a value. It's going to take in a string value, and then you type a colon, and then we're going to instantiate our stack class. So I'm going to say stack equals stack and then parens. Now this stack word right here, this could be anything. We could call it x, we could call it s, well not str because that's a reserved word, but uh, you, you could call any type of variable name. It's just a variable name. I like to use the word stack here because it is reflective of what it actually is. So what we're doing here, if you're not terribly familiar with how object-oriented programming works, when we create a class like we have here with our stack class, in order to use this, we need to what is called instantiate it, which means that we need to call it and have it create a object that has all of those attributes. So when we stay, say stack equals and then this capital stack with the parens, we're saying that we're going to instantiate this class which means we're going to have access to run push, pop, peak, and then get all. So we're going to have access to all of those elements just like that. And this is in Python, but that is very similar. The process really works in a very similar way if you were in JavaScript or Ruby or different languages like that. Now that we have our stack class, now we're going to iterate over. So we're going to use a for loop. So I'm going to say for the character, so for car, you could once again call this anything you want. You could call it C or anything like that. But I'm going to say for character in range. So range is a special keyword in Python. So I'm going to say for the character in the range, and then I'm going to say len, and then inside of len, we're going to take the value. So what exactly does that do? What we're doing is we're saying we're creating a for loop, and we want to loop over 
something that is in the exact range of whatever the length of the string is. So in other words, for my name, we're going to want to create a way to iterate one, two, three, four, five, six times because I have six characters in my name. If this was a different name, then it would only iterate three times. So that's how the for loop works in Python. So I'm going to say for the character in the range of the length of whatever value we get, then I want to call our new stack instantiated variable here. And then we're going to call the push method. And we're going to take the value of the character. So in other words, the first time this goes through, we are going to take the J for my name. And so if you have this full string here like this, the first time this is going to be J. The next time through, it's going to be O. Next time through, R, that kind of thing. And so because, and this is why I love this as a case study for understanding the way a stack works. This means, imagine you have the kind of this imaginary set of letters. First one goes in is J. Next one that goes in is O, and they keep on stacking on top of each other. So when we want to reverse a string, the stack class does this automatically for us because the last character is we're wanting to reverse this, it's going to be the very last character in the string, and then the second to the last, and the third to the last. So this is going to give us all of that behavior of being able to reverse a string just by default, by kind of the nature of how a stack works. So here we are going to start the process off by generating our stack by pushing each one of the characters of the string onto that stack. So that's the first part. So we're saying for the characters, then we're going to create a updated string value. We're going to set it equal just to an empty string. I'm going to close out our stack class just so you have plenty of room to see. And then I'm going to use a while loop. So I'm going to say while not the length of the stack, and then I'm going to call our get all function. So in other words, as long as we have not exceeded the bounds of the stack, then I and make sure that that is equal to zero, then I want to take that updated string and then I want to pop which returns that last character stack dot pop just like this and that's all we need to do in the loop so in other words what we're saying is as long as there are characters in the stack I want you to keep going through those characters and grab the last item return it and then add it to that string so right here, we are creating that stack. I, for me, stacks, I really can understand stacks the best when they are vertical. So the first time it goes through, we have J just like this. The next time on top of it, we're going to put that O. And then after that is going to be R. And it's going to go all the way through my name. And they keep on getting stacked on top. Now, when we start this process, what we're saying is we're going to go through and we're going to take that top character, whatever the last one is, we're going to remove it, but then we're also going to add it to that string. So that's how we're going to get that behavior where we are reversing those string characters. And we're going to, and this while not loop, this is just making sure that we don't go past the bounds of the stack. So now that we have all of that, all we need to do is return the updated string. And that should be all that we need to do. Let me clear out these extra spaces here and let's test this out. So I'm going to create a name variable here of my name. And then I'm going to say print reverse string and then pass in that name variable. And now let's test this out to see if it's going to work. So Python, and then this is the reverse string with stack.py file. Run that. And there it is. That's perfect. That's working exactly the way it should. So you could use your name, type anything in there that you want. 
run it again, and it's all working perfectly. So if the concept of stacks were a little bit abstract to you and you weren't really understanding what their purpose was or how they worked in more of a practical environment, hopefully by building out this reverse string function, you were able to understand how stacks work and how you can use them in your own programs.